Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2020-21 season. My name is Dan and today we're doing a buy, sell, keep, avoid video for game week 19. Now I am sorry if this video is a little bit rushed, maybe a little bit shorter than usual, maybe not as in-depth as usual. Um, but I found myself really, really pushed for time today and I really do want to make sure I do watch the Arsenal Crystal Palace game, which is on after... I record this video, so we're not going to be talking about that uh, game today in any sense. Um, so you're going to have to, uh, you know, excuse me for that. But aside from that, I do love this series. I do want to make sure I make a buy, sell, keep, avoid video every single game week. So if you do enjoy this series, please do give a big, a big, give a big thumbs up. Easy for me to say. Give a big thumbs up on the video if you can, please. Really, really appreciate it. And if you are new around here, please consider subscribing as we push towards 50,000 subscribers. So close now. So close, guys. I can almost smell it. But anyway. Um, before we get into the video, a quick word from our sponsors today. And Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid is once again sponsored by OneFootball. Now, for those of you who don't know what OneFootball is, it's a great app slash website for all things football. Now, I personally like to use the OneFootball mobile app to check lineups on Premier League games, check the scores, um, you know, potentially check some stats of games that I'm not watching or watching during the game. Check the stats, see what's going on, see what substitutions are being made, this, that and the other. But it's also a great news for football news and transfer rumours, which is great, especially during January transfer window here. So if you'd like to stay up to date with your football and check out the link at the top of my description and go check it out for yourself, it's completely free. So very quickly, very, very quickly, let's explain the rules. So buys are players you probably don't have, but should consider bringing in. Sells are players you probably have, but should consider removing. Players, uh, keeps are players you probably have and should keep. And avoids are players that you probably don't have, but you should also avoid. These are kind of, some of them are kind of like bandwagons. The, the avoids are always my favourite part of the video because I say some controversial ones. A lot of people will be bringing in some avoids. But um, I've got some spicy ones for you today that you probably thought were great shouts to bring in this game week. I'm going to try and convince you otherwise, but obviously, you know, it's down to you. At the end of the day, I can only give my opinion. But we'll start off with the first buy, which is so Sheck. Um, I know what you guys are going to say here. He was an avoid last week. How come he's a buy this week? Well, come on, guys. Give me, give me a little bit of credit here. He didn't even have a game in game week 18. And in game week 19, he plays two games, which is just it's an insanely different situation. You know, things move fast in FPL. Don't be surprised if things do change from one week to the other along the way. Sort of adapting to change is part of the game and, and part of improving at the game as well. But anyway, let's talk about Soshek. So, amazing value, amazing double game week fixtures versus Burnley and West Brom, both of which are at home. He's probably the best West Ham attacker to go for, which is strange to say about a defensive midfielder. I, I really am, I genuinely feel that way. He is a really, really good um, attacking player for West Ham. There's not really anyone else I prefer. I mean, maybe you could go for Bowen or Antonio you may be thinking about. I think I prefer Soche, especially at this value. Absolutely amazing. So his fixtures are actually pretty good after the double game week as well. So after the double game week, he's got Palace in game week 20, then Liverpool, Villa, Fulham and Sheffield United. Fair enough, Liverpool, Villa, not great. But Palace, Fulham, Sheffield United could be okay, you know. You never know. You could get some uh, a few more points. And, you know, you can easily bench him against uh, teams like Villa and Liverpool you're not happy with him for those game weeks he's so cheap you can't just stick him on the bench it's no problem when you're spending that little money on a player it's not really an issue is it so anyway let's look at his stats from the last five games eight shots all eight of those were in the box five of them are on target so a good percentage of his shots are on target indeed two of those chances were big chances 1.56 expected goals and he actually got two goals during this five game period as well now he is lacking a little bit on the creative front which is the only kind of downside to Soshek. But I say downside, at this price, you can't really expect too much. Um, but most of the points for midfielders are going to come through your goals anyway. Goals get you a lot more points than assists do for midfielders. So that's really not too much of a worry. I really do like the look of him for this double game week. And I, if I had him, he would be one of my favourite players for this game week for sure. Really, really exciting for Soshek owners and uh, for any new uh, Soshek owners out there as well. My next buy is Ollie Watkins. Maybe this one surprises you a little bit, but no, I really do like the look of him. He's got a double game week versus City and Newcastle. Now, previously, it wasn't going to have that fixture against Newcastle, was it? It was going to be against Everton, I believe. Obviously, that's changed. Things have changed a little bit. Don't expect Watkins to get anything against City. He's going to get a two-pointer. That's going to be it, realistically. I don't really expect Villa to score against City, if I'm perfectly honest. It could happen, but it's unlikely. Newcastle, on the other hand, now this is a new thing. It's new that Villa are going to be playing against Newcastle in game week 19. And this kind of changes everything. Newcastle have been 
genuinely, genuinely dreadful. Really, really awful. The only team that has not absolutely dominated them is Liverpool in recent game weeks. And, you know, Liverpool have been kind of off form a little bit at the moment. So you can kind of understand that as well. Obviously, Newcastle have just lost 1-0 to Sheffield United. But I wouldn't blame you if you didn't watch the game. But if you did, you would have seen that Sheffield United absolutely dominated Newcastle. So Sheffield United, a team that generally struggles to score goals, create chances absolutely dominating Newcastle so they really have I'm sorry Newcastle fans you're not been good recently and you are a team that we kind of want to be targeting right now with our FPL players and Watkins is kind of perfect for that striker against a really really poor defense so anyway um uh, you know Watkins fixtures they look okay in the medium term too I'm it, long term not so much but I'm not really that bothered about long term at the moment because things are changing so quickly it kind of feels like we need to be making decisions more in the short term than the long term anyway but anyway Let's look at his stats from the last five games and they tell a good story from Watkins, really. 19 shots, eight in, 18 in the box, seven on foes and on target. So maybe he could get a few more shots on target. But four big chances, 2.7 expected goals. Now that's high. That is very high. Um, he obviously hasn't scored a goal during this period, but... Watching him, you've seen he's got, had some really, really huge chances. Maybe his finishing isn't as good as it could be. But when you look at this, you think... Goals are coming their way. They, they definitely come in their way. Surely you can't have an expected goals of 2.7 over five game weeks and, you know, continue that that vein of form and not score. It's going to come eventually. So eight key passes as well. One big chance created, 1.37 expected assists. And he's actually managed to get three assists during that time as well. Perhaps a little bit um, overperforming there. But it is interesting to see that he has been putting through a lot of passes. And now as a striker is what we quite like. It's what we liked about Harry Kane earlier in the season. That despite he's a forward, there is a lot of assist potential there as well and I do think there is a degree of assist potential with Watkins but anyway his projected points are much much higher than his actual points obviously he could be scoring a lot of goals I think they're on their way why not get in on them why not you know take the two points from City and then anything against Newcastle could be pretty good so let's have a look on to some sales and we're going to start off with Zaha the love-hate relationship that I have with Zaha continues I guess so no double game week so Pretty much anyone who doesn't have a double game week is someone we're not really interested in for this particular game week. Um, and he plays City next. It's kind of a good time to sell, really, isn't it? So Chris, Crystal Palace, in general, not looking very good at the moment, though. Perhaps I might eat my words after this Arsenal game, but you might have already seen the Arsenal game. You probably have. Maybe I'm eating my words by now, but I'm not. I'm not keen on him. Uh, keen on you know Palace at the moment in general. The fixtures are okay for Crystal Palace. Are they good enough, though, to, you know, in the immediate slash medium term to hold on to him at 7.4 million? So last five games for Zaha, excluding the Arsenal game, of course, eight shots, seven in the box, three on target, one big chance, 0.93 expected goals, one goal, three key passes, 0.41 expected assists and no assist. His fixtures over this five game period weren't even that bad and you can see that his output is not good. To have three shots in t on target in five games for supposedly the main man in this Crystal Palace team. Just one goal, no assists. It's not really good enough, is it? And, you know, there's a lot of reasons to sell him in this game. I, I really think. He kind of disappointed me and I think it disappointed a lot of us recently to be fair. So get rid, get rid. Ward Prowse is my next sell. A player I actually probably told you to keep a few game weeks ago, I think, but... Like I said, things are moving very, very quickly. Southampton no longer have a double game week. And now the Ward Prowse doesn't have a double game week. I don't really see that there's a reason to keep him in your teams anymore. Uh, kind of Leicester away is the only game that they're going to be playing in game week 19 now. Is that, it's not exactly a nice fixture, is it? It's kind of a tough fixture. Now, Southampton, they aren't really scoring many goals anyway. And outside set pieces, James Ward Prowse... I think he's a good player, but he's looked pretty useless in FPL terms. Really, really not producing anything that we're really interested in um, in terms of FPL players. So last five games for Ward Prowse, four shots, one in the box, one shot in the box. Either, yeah, whatever. One on target, one on one shot on target in five games. Terrible. 0.18 expected goals. Five key passes, but no big chances created. So even the creativity isn't fully there. 0.24 expected assists. And he did get one assist um, as his only goal contribution over those five games. So he's overperforming. And yet he's only had one goal contribution over five games. And it was an assist. Not really that good, is it? So instead, we can go for someone like so Sheik, Foden, Grealish, perhaps, if you can afford him. But maybe you can go for another Villa midfielder like El Ghazi, who I still really like the look of as a differential. So, yeah, James Ward-Prowse, if I had him in my, in my team, 
I really would not be wanting to, to play him in this game week, no. On to some keys. We're going to start off with Son. I know a lot of you probably want to sell Son, don't you? I can tell already. You're thinking he's eating up your budget. You're thinking, oh, he didn't get any points last game week in game week uh, 18. I don't think you should judge him based on his points from game week 18. He could have easily got two goals in, in, in this game week. Um, he, really, he really didn't look too bad at all. Um, he kind of looked just as much of a threat as Kane, despite not getting any uh, anywhere near the points that Kane did. He looked just as much of a threat. I think I thought he played quite well. Now, I know he hasn't got a double game week next, but he does have Sheffield United. Now, Sheffield United is a pretty good fixture to be going in on. And when I'm looking at single game week players, Son and Kane stand out as uh, the ones that could, I guess, troll a lot of us in actually scoring a, a, more points than some double game week players, even though they've only got a single game week. I really think that Son and Kane might be the troll players this game week um, in terms of the single game week players. So don't ignore single game week players on a double game week because there is still potential for some points there. And I think if anyone's getting points, Son, Kane, those are the guys I'd be looking at. So anyway, last five games from Son, actually not too bad. So 10 shots, 9 in the box, 6 on target, 7 big chances, which is just insane. 7 big chances in 5 games. Very, very nice. 3.09 expected goals. And in those expected goals, he only got two goals. So two goals out of the 3.09 expected. That's highly unusual for Son. Highly unusual. Usually, he'll pretty much finish off every one of his big chances. He's real, a real clinical player. So we don't expect this trend to last for very long because that's not really the kind of player that Son is. Do think points are very much on the way in terms of goals. 10 key passes, 3 big chances created, 1.86 expected assists and only 1 assist. So again, he is underperforming his assist stats. You know, maybe Harry Kane hasn't been quite clinical enough. But these things will very much change. 10 key passes over 5 game weeks. Not too bad, is it? 3 big chances created. The, the, the stats look really good for Son. And if he becomes his usual clinical self once again, it will happen. Then we're going to be back in the points. We're going to be back in the money. Everything's going to look good again. So I would be very, very cautious about selling Son now, especially if you're doing it based on the amount, the amount of points that he's got recently. I think points are going to come back our way for sure. Next keep is Grealish. Now, Grealish has now got this double fixture in game week 19. I've kind of alluded to now Villa previously. They didn't have a double game week. Then they had a double game week. City and Everton, not great. And now... One of their double game week games are against Newcastle, who have just been awful recently. So selling Grealish when they're about to play Newcastle and those two extra points, because let's just assume that there's only going to be two points against Man City. It's a nice little bonus anyway, isn't it? It seems silly to sell him now. So fixtures after that, they actually look okay as well. I can't really see many non-premium midfielders that I'd rather have this game week than Grealish, to be fair. So it's kind of a terrible time to sell him, really. He's still the seventh most transferred out player so a lot of people really wanted to sell Grealish but I don't know I, I feel like he's been one of the players I've been more likely more inclined to buy this game week rather than sell strange one but anyway uh, last five game weeks for Grealish 10 shots eight in the box three on target one big chance 0.98 expected goals zero goals so perhaps <clears throat> there's a little bit more to be it leaves a little bit to be desired in terms of goal outputs we would like to see a little bit more but you know, he's underperforming, so maybe they are on their way, these goals. And then 26 key passes, which is just insane. Like, over five key passes per game. That's really, really nice. Five big chances created, so a key, a, a big chance created per game, essentially, there. 3.08 expected assists and three assists. So he's, he's working out about right for his assists. If, if Watkins was a little bit more clinical over this period, then, you know, Greenish could have had a lot more points, to be fair. So, yeah... There is, it's not amazing, Grealish's stats, but there is something there. There's definitely something there. And on a double game week, if one of the games is Newcastle, you've got to keep him. I think you've got to keep him, really. On to some avoids, the controversial ones. We're going to start off with Banford. Banford is the less controversial of the two avoids that I've got for you today. You're not going to like this last one. I'll tell you that for sure, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm going to give my opinion, and you can tell me what you guys think. But Banford, no longer has a double game week, so... Just plays Brighton. As I always and I continue to say, do not underestimate Brighton's defence. Once again, people underestimated Brighton's defence. But I saw a lot of people saying, oh, Man City are going to beat Brighton sort of 5-0. And I was sort of like, 
really when when does that happen it's not really very likely to happen brighton have been on the decline but they're not a team that you go out and beat 5-0 they're not whipping boys are they um you know in a similar sense that maybe you would say newcastle are, are whipping boys maybe you'd say leeds you could score a lot of goals against brighton aren't that team so don't underestimate brighton i know um kind of leeds do score a lot of goals but I'm not expecting a huge amount of um, points from Bamford this game. Not, it, you could easily get a goal, maybe even two. But that's kind of uh, that's kind of the ceiling there. Um, but anyway, um, he hasn't actually he hasn't actually had any real big scores for a, quite a while. Um, I think if if you're talking about game week 20, maybe you do bring him in. But game week 19. He's not really the player to go for purely because of the double game week factor. I think I would only be considering bringing in double game week players this game week, if I'm put completely honest. And um, it kind of looks like Leeds might be dropping off a little bit. I'm not sure about this, but anyway. Bamford, last five, not quite as good as it has been in previous um, parts of the season. So 19 shots, still a lot. 16 in the box, still a lot. Eight on target. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You would. It's a lot in general, but you would expect. You would hope that he gets a few more on target. Five big chances, three point two three expected goals, only two goals. But we kind of expect that Bamford will not reach his full expected potential. That's kind of the player he is. Two key passes, one big chance is created. 0.99 expected assists and two actual assists. So actually, that's been okay in the, in the assist department. Even though he's not creating a lot of chances, the chances that have been created have, I guess been okay but i wouldn't put too much pressure on that but he is underperforming his stats that is kind of expected there's nothing amazing going on with bamford right now and i don't think it's an amazing fixture so look elsewhere watkins as i said earlier looks much nicer for this game week i think and let's finish you off with my michael antonio you're not gonna like this one are you it's fine i mean this is just my opinion i think antonio is an avoid and i know a lot of people will be thinking oh what antonio is like one of the first players that i would be looking at for this double game let me look at these amazing fixtures that west ham have there is more to it you can't just look at you know who is a good player and who has a good fixture it's a real simple way of looking at things but i think there's a little bit more to it in this instance so antonio has a long 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 history of being injury prone he's injury prone kind of right now he's not fully fit right now he looked knackered just playing a, playing a few minutes of football he, he he can barely get through a whole game without looking absolutely knackered right now and i don't think there's any way he can play twice in one week if you like sort of going back in the past this has been a, a recurring thing with antonio antonio other than a brief period over the summer the summer just gone there was for years and years and years antonio could only play like one game a week in bursts and because he does have these recurring injuries that seem to keep happening he can't play multiple games per week other than that brief stint over summer we kind of seem like we're back in the same situation where he can't play every single game week so does that mean that he's not going to be playing both of these games in this double game week? He essentially has a single game week. I think that's the situation we find ourselves in. And you will be saying to me, but he's the only striker at West Ham. Uh, Alaire is gone. He's going to be the only one. But but that's not even true because Moyes, he's apparently a really big fan. And West Ham play really, really rate this youth player that they have called Mipo Odebeko. And apparently he is going to be making his debut this weekend. So does that mean... Antonio plays one game, Odebeku plays the other. I would speculate that that, that is the situation, but either way, it looks like it's going to eat into Antonio's minutes. He's not going to have this typical double game week that you might be expecting. And we don't really have form to go on with Antonio either. He played 90 minutes versus Stockford. Uh, Stockford? Stockport. He looked knackered, hardly threatened. Uh, before that, he hadn't played any significant minutes since game week six against City, I believe which is just ages and ages and ages ago. At the start of the season, yes, he did look good, but his potential minutes really does worry me. His fitness really, really worries me. And it seems like a huge, unnecessary risk. Now, am I saying it won't pay off? No, not really. I think there is obviously a chance this pay pays off. There's obviously a chance he plays both games, performs absolutely fantastically. You never know. But it is a real risk. And I'm kind of at a point in this season where maybe so much is going wrong should we be taking more risks or perhaps less risk? Maybe we should be playing it a little bit more safe. If you really fancy a risk, go for Antonio. But I just want to warn you that this is probably more of a risk than you probably originally thought. So is it an avoid? 
kind of it's not a probably a, a typical avoid it's more of a i really want to use this opportunity to warn you guys that potentially he won't be playing both matches potentially he won't get as many minutes as he, as he uh, you'd like him to and potentially he's not in the form and fitness where he can put out two really good performances so uh, yeah there you go guys so quick conclusion, basically keep any player that plays a double game week. I think that's kind of the rule. Uh, you know, even if they aren't amazing players, I think if you think they'll play both games, then you're kind of guaranteed a few points there. And you kind of try and avoid any player that has a single game week. Just for your transfers this game week, going forward, we can start looking at all kinds of players again. But for this game week, only transfer in players that have uh, double game weeks and only transfer out players probably that have single game weeks. I think that kind of makes sense. You kind of want to maximize your double game week players. Um, hold on to Son and Kane, as I do think they could do quite well despite the single, unless they really, you know, you really want KDB, for example, and you have to sacrifice one of them to do that. Um, Antonio, like I say, he is a risk. This is kind of isn't the week for Bamford either, and I do think Watkins, Watkins is probably the best cheap forward to be bringing in for this game week. I think. I, I, I hope. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a like on the video. Really, really helpful. And do subscribe if you are new around here. Please do check out the stuff in the description. Of course, One Football is in there. And then you've got my Twitter, Instagram. Follow me on, on, on or support me on Patreon. If you want to join my mini league, you can do that as well. But, guys, tomorrow I'm going to do my team selection video for the double game week, which kind of plans have changed a lot. A lot's changed, so I'm keen to show you my thoughts on that one. And then perhaps we'll do a deadline stream uh, the following day on Saturday as well. But there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching once again. And I will see you on the next one. See you later, mates. Bye-bye.